LeBron James is one of the most polarizing figures in basketball history. The man has his haters both off and on the court. In fact, the NBA is full of players who can't stand him, so let's take a look at some of his biggest basketball enemies. Sports hate often differs from true feelings of animosity. For example, fans of the New York Mets hated Chipper Jones because of how he tortured Mets pitchers during his days with the Atlanta Braves. But they also admired him as a tremendous competitor and respected rival. For years, many assumed that James and the Golden State Warriors' Steph Curry shared a similar relationship. From 2015 to 2018, James and Curry competed against each other in the NBA Finals four times in a row, with the Warriors coming out on top in three of those encounters. While it's safe to say that James and Curry shared some trash talk during those games, James nevertheless congratulated Curry as the Warriors closed the Cavs out in Game 4 of the 2018 Finals. But it seems that these two may have resented each other more than we realized. In December 2019, the Ringers Bill Simmons and ESPN's Brian Windhorst discussed the matter, with Simmons claiming that the rivalry between the two wasn't friendly. Windhorst added that Curry sitting above James in jersey sales during the 2010s may have played a role in the two ballers not being able to stand each other outside of the occasional post-game handshake. One thing that Joakim Noah learned during the prime of his career was what it felt like to lose to LeBron James during postseason showdowns. In 2010, 2011, 2013, and 2015, Noah and the Chicago Bulls were bounced from the playoffs by James-led teams. But as much as losing breeds hatred, there's more to this story. Way back during one particular game in 2009, James and Noah exchanged what we have to assume were unkind words. I mean, somebody's got to stop this. I mean, it's... Yeah, well, the glad Chicago bench has got to stop this. That's correct. Yeah. Then, in the spring of 2010, Noah doubled down on negative comments he previously made about the city of Cleveland. And after James left Cleveland for the Miami Heat in 2010, Noah referred to the Heat as Hollywood as hell. When James made an emotional return to Cleveland in 2014, it didn't soften Noah's stance on his rival as he declared, I really hope we can kick his ass as many times as possible. Then, during a 2015 playoff game, Noah said something that enraged James. While we don't know exactly what it was, it prompted James to say, I'm okay with competing against Joe. I love the competitive nature, but we should leave it there. The disrespectful words that he said to me were uncalled for. Draymond Green was probably the NBA's best antagonizer during the Golden State Warriors' run of dominance in the second half of the 2010s. He was the type of player that his opponents hated to face during playoff games, as he was often willing to do almost anything and kick almost anybody necessary to win. In addition to being one of the dirtiest players in NBA history, Green also wasn't shy about calling out the game's biggest player. After winning the NBA Finals in 2015, Green mocked the Cavaliers with a series of insults, saying, Cavaliers? Nope. We won? Yep. They suck? Yep. We here? Yep. They not? Nope. Of course, James can give it as good as he can take it. For example, in October 2016, he trolled the Warriors with a decoration that mocked Golden State for blowing a 3-1 lead to the Cavs during the 2016 Finals. After the Warriors avenged that loss in 2017, Green took a shot at James and the Cavs via a t-shirt that poked fun at the former name of Cleveland's home arena. I can't forget the, the Ultimate Warriors shirt last year from LeBron and, you know, the 3-1 Tombstone cookies and all of that, so, you know, I was waiting on this moment. Green kept the fashion burns coming after the Warriors toppled Cleveland again to win the 2018 Finals. Referencing a meme shared by James on his Instagram, an image of a clenched fist that was captioned Mood, Green showed up wearing the exact same meme on his shirt, only this fist was wearing three championship rings. As much as neither of them want to admit it, LeBron James and Kevin Durant share many similarities. For example, they will go down as two of the greatest scorers in NBA history. Also, they both ditched franchises to chase rings and glory with other teams during their primes. James twice left the Cleveland Cavaliers, first for the Heat in 2010 and then for the Los Angeles Lakers in 2018. As for Durant, he controversially signed with the Warriors in July 2016 after he and the Oklahoma City Thunder lost to Golden State in the Western Conference Finals. Despite this, Durant hasn't always been complimentary toward James. In December 2018, Durant told Bleacher Report that a toxic environment hovered over James and his team due to the attention James received from journalists. Durant's comments reportedly angered James so much that Durant felt compelled to apologize before that Christmas. That's all well and good, but it's worth noting that Durant didn't join James in the Lakers when he could have as a free agent in 2019. Instead, he joined up with James's former teammate Kyrie Irving as a member of the Brooklyn Nets. If you've been paying attention to the NBA at all the past decade, seeing the names LeBron James and Lance Stevenson mentioned in the same sentence surely takes you right back to the time when Stevenson blew into James's ear during the 2014 Eastern Conference Finals. 
But James had the last laugh as he and the Heat would go on to defeat Stevenson and the Indiana Pacers in six games. That was neither the first nor the last incident between these two. In the 2012 NBA playoffs, Stevenson made a choking gesture toward James after the King missed a free throw. Six years later, Stevenson took a veiled shot at James during a post-game interview by telling an interviewer, hey, I fan no man. You on the other teams? I don't care. I don't care about you. But it turns out that the sports world often makes interesting and unique bedfellows. After James signed with the Lakers in July 2018, Stevenson followed in his footsteps as he also joined Los Angeles, although his stint there would last just one season. In fairness to Isaiah Thomas, he probably never thought he would play alongside LeBron James when an injury prematurely ended his in the Boston Celtics battle against the Cavaliers in the 2017 Eastern Conference Finals. That summer, however, Thomas was dealt to the Cavs in the trade that involved Kyrie Irving leaving Cleveland for Beantown. Thomas's active time with the Cavs only lasted about a month, though. He debuted on January 2, 2018, and he appeared in a total of 15 games before he was traded to the Lakers as part of Cleveland's roster restructuring ahead of the postseason. Not long after that transaction was made official, Fox Sports personality Chris Broussard claimed that somebody close to Thomas told him that Thomas had no love at all for James. And he felt like LeBron kind of talked down to him when he was there and so on and so forth. Unsurprisingly, the two weren't a match made in heaven when James decided to sign with the Lakers in July 2018, as later that same month, Thomas joined the Denver Nuggets. One of the great on-court rivalries of this century is that between Paul Pierce and LeBron James. The competition started during James's rookie season, and it included multiple playoff battles. Unlike so many players throughout the 2000s, Pierce didn't always miss when he took shots at the King. Most notably, Pierce and the Boston Celtics toppled James and the Cavaliers in 2008 on their way to winning the championship. Pierce again got the better of James during the 2010 Eastern Conference semifinals. Pierce's retirement in 2017 didn't quell the trash talk between the two. While working for ESPN, Pierce said that Kevin Durant and not James was the league's best player during the 2017 NBA Finals. The two then yelled back and forth at each other throughout Game 7 of the 2018 Eastern Conference Finals between Cleveland and Boston, which the Cavs ended up winning. And then the story got even crazier. In January 2019, Brian Windhorst tweeted about how Pierce and James nearly came to blows back during a preseason game in 2004. Bill Simmons responded that the near altercation was followed by, quote, 12 years of legit bad blood between the two. Seconds after the Warriors eliminated the Cavaliers in the 2017 NBA Finals, LeBron James confidently told his then-teammate Kyrie Irving, we'll be back. While speaking with reporters after that defeat, Irving echoed that take and gave zero indication that he wouldn't return to the Cavs the following season. However, he experienced a change of heart during the summer months as he requested a trade from the Cavs so he could escape James's shadow and be the key figure for another contender. Things got even more intense as he repeatedly mocked James during the offseason. Once at a wedding and again via a social media post when he sang I'm Coming Home, the tune associated with James's return to Cleveland in 2014. Before the Cavs granted Irving's wish and sent him to the Boston Celtics, ESPN reported that Irving was bothered that Cleveland allowed one of James's friends to have a job with the franchise while he never received the same offer. ESPN also confirmed that the Cavs didn't hold an exit interview with Irving that June and thus never learned about any issues he had until it was too late. Irving eventually apologized to James for taking his former leader for granted, but he also never considered joining James as a Laker when he had a chance to in 2019, instead opting to sign with the Nets. Deshaun Stevenson was playing for the Washington Wizards in March 2008 when for some reason he thought it was wise to poke the bear and disparage LeBron James after Washington defeated the Cavs. As he was leaving the building, Stevenson said, He's overrated and you can say I said that. James then offered a humorous response. With Deshaun Stevenson, it's kind of funny. It's almost like Jay-Z responding to a negative comment made by Soldier Boy. It doesn't make sense to respond. No disrespect meant to Soldier Boy, but he never flirted with reaching the status held by Jay-Z, who was widely considered one of the greatest rappers in history. Despite that, the comments between Stevenson and James resulted in Soldier Boy making an appearance at a playoff game between Washington and Cleveland, and also Jay-Z creating a diss track about both Stevenson and Soldier Boy. Stevenson last played in the NBA during the 2012-13 season, while James was still going strong as one of the league's biggest stars for several years after. Maybe that had something to do with Stevenson expressing regret regarding any drama between the two in March 2019 when he admitted, basically, we were both making a fool of ourselves. Charles Barkley, aka the round mound of rebound, is many things. He's a Hall of Famer, a member of the 1992 and 1996 Dream Teams, 
one of the greatest forwards in history and a consistently entertaining television personality. He's also outspoken and ready to voice an opinion on just about anything when a microphone is in front of him. For example, after LeBron James criticized the Cleveland Cavaliers' front office during the 2016-17 season for not bolstering the team's roster, Barkley called James's comments, quote, inappropriate, whiny, all of the above. James offered a retort to ESPN, referring to Barkley as a hater. He also scrutinized Barkley's past as a player, saying, I'm not the one who threw someone through a window. I never spit on a kid. I never had unpaid debt in Las Vegas. I never said, I'm not a role model. I never showed up to All-Star Weekend on Sunday because I was in Vegas all weekend partying. After James and the Lakers were eliminated from playoff contention in 2019, Barkley invited him to the Inside the NBA set, jokingly adding, quote, he ain't got nothing else to do. We always bring players in for the playoffs. You're not going to be busy during the playoffs, so I'm inviting you here. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.